Vectors are very easy to create. And vectors are just lines or circles, or in this case, text. In this example, we're going to be creating a small plaque for a child's bedroom. Now, if I just select all of the vectors, I can do that by just creating a box around all of them and then just selecting delete. Now you'll notice that I have two colors here. The pink is just a normal vector when it's selected. The purple ones are actually grouped together and I'll show you how you can do that later. So if I press delete on the keyboard, it will get rid of the vectors. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is to create a rectangle. So you can do that by selecting on the left here and then just left click and just drag a box out. Then you can enter the width. Let's do that, let's say 140, and a height, let's say 90. You can add corner radius to this. So let's say I want to do 10. You can also change this by actually dragging on the corner there, like so. You can also invert it if you wished. Let's make those a little bit smaller and then select create when you've finished. Now you can either cancel that or just right click to exit the tool. And then to get this in the center, you can either press F9 on the keyboard or go down to the vector drop down, select center in model from the align menu. Now to edit this, do something called node editing, which shows all of the points and you can actually move each of these points. And you can also insert new ones. So if you go into node editing, which is here, you can also press N on the keyboard for the shortcut. And basically it allows you to move all of the points. So if I hover over the midpoint there, I can right click and I can see that I have a few options. One of those is insert a node. So if I select that, I can insert this node and I can select it and I can move that up. Now at the moment, you can see that this is just a straight sharp node because it's just going to a point. Now if I were to right click on that and change that to a smooth node, you can see that it then becomes a curve. So I'm going to do the same for each of the sections. And I'm going to use the shortcuts for this, which is I and then S. So I'm going to now edit this again, I'm going to offset this. So I'm going to use the offset vectors tool and I'm going to create two offsets. Now you can either enter a distance in the tool dialog box or you can just select the actual vector, bring that outwards, let's say to there. Let's select this one again and let's bring that to about there. If you don't want to move all the way over to the right hand side to close that dialog box, you can just press escape on the keyboard. Now I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can cut up a vector. So the middle vector that I have here, I don't want that to look like that. I just want four arcs on the corners. So I'll show you a couple of ways that you can do that. The top here, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go into node editing. So I just pressed N on the keyboard, it gives me all of the points. And what I'm going to do is right click, select cut vector, which is C. I'm going to do the same there. So I'll just hover over it, press C on the keyboard and it cuts the vector up. Okay, so that's one way of cutting something up. Another way is by using the trim tool. So what I'm going to do is create a line and I'm going to snap to that point. So you see that the cursor changes there. I'm going to snap to there. Now you can see that this wants to carry on creating a line. If you just want to carry on creating a line but want to specify a new point, press space on the keyboard and it will allow you to create a new one without having to close the tool down. When you're happy with that, press escape. Now to trim that off, if I go to the trim vectors tool, 
And then what I can do with these scissors is select the area that I want to remove. So if I select there and select there, that's erased both of those. And then what I can do is just delete each of these. Now you can see that I've selected one of those. If I want to select a second one, press shift on the keyboard and then select a second one. And then press delete on the keyboard. Okay, so there's my two arcs. I can select one of those, press shift on the keyboard, select a second, and I want to mirror these over to the other side. And I can do that by using the mirror objects tool, which is located here. So if I select that, and then I want to make sure that I've got copy the original object selected, and I'm going to do this over the model. So I'm going to create some circles now for drilling. So let's create a circle. Now it doesn't really matter what size you actually do these because when you do the tool path, the actual tool diameter will determine the size of these. So I'm going to do this a radius of, let's say 1.5 millimeters, select create, and then I can cancel that. Now if I center this, so if I go to align centering model, you can see that that's in the center of the model, but I need to move this to the right hand side. So I can do that by selecting the actual vector, which then allows me to move it freely. But if I select alt on the keyboard whilst doing that, it maintains an angle snap. So I know that that's exactly level. So I can move that to there. Let's create a mirror of that, and I'll do that across the model. And you can see that it's created a copy over there. All that I need to do now is create the text. So if we go to the big T icon, which is create vector text, it will open up the text tool, the font. You can see these are all the fonts that are actually installed on your computer. So whatever fonts you have installed on your computer, it will automatically see in ArtCam. And I'm just going to type in Junior's Room. Press Enter. And then select Create. You can change the spacing of this. You can change the size of this to whatever you want. Select create, and then let's just align that in the center. And you'll notice that when I select this, it's all purple. That means that it's all grouped together. So if I select any of this text, it's all grouped together. Now I want to do that for the circles. So if I select one of the circles, and then shift select the second circle and I can come here to group. And if I select that, they now become a group and they're both purple. So if I select one of those, you can see that it selects both of them.